Hello, <clears throat> bloody hell, oh, it's a late night. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to Auto Shenanigans. How the devil are you? Have you had a good week? My name is John. Thank you very much for joining me for another exciting episode of Secrets of the Motorway. It's part two of the M62. Last week, we ended at the rather famous Stott Hall Farm, which sits between junctions 22 and 23 of the M62. A short distance up from the farm is this rather impressive structure, Scarmenden Bridge. It took three years to build, opening in 1970, and at the time of its construction was believed to be one of, if not the biggest, concrete single-span structure in the world. It's 200 metres in length, with a single span of 120 metres. It sits 120 feet above the motorway and due to its position has been designed to withstand wind speeds up to 110 miles per hour. I had to include this absolute gem from Wikipedia, so I don't know if it's true or not, but the bridge suffers from high winds and pedestrians find it quite difficult to walk across, apparently. So a new type of road sign was installed to let people know about the high winds. Problem solved, don't worry about it, as long as there's a sign, right? And to think there's somebody in an office getting paid for this stuff. Next door to the bridge is Scarmenton Reservoir. It's contained with a dam upon which the M62 runs right across and it's the only motorway dam in the country. Construction of the dam began in the mid-1960s and it was always the intention to run the motorway across the top. They were kind of taking care of two jobs at once really. It saved them having to build a bridge. They wanted a reservoir so two birds one stone isn't it? Building the reservoir meant the loss of an entire village. Hiding underneath the waterline is the remains of Deanhead Village. Just for fun, the dam has got 458 steps which allow you to walk all the way to the top and admire the M62. Or turn around, there's a much better view that way. Here's an exciting unscripted discovery. It turns out that there's a tunnel that runs through the dam allowing you to access the other side. Ooh. Junction 26 is where the M606 spurs off from the M62 and heads off towards Bradford. And not long after passing the junction, you'll drive under a bridge which carries the A58 across the motorway. You probably wouldn't notice from below, but the bridge seems to have been built to a larger size than is currently being used. To me, this looks like a planned dual carriageway upgrade that never happened, and it's a similar story just down the road where the A651 crosses over the motorway. I didn't manage to find any plans confirming anything, but we've seen this sort of thing before, where infrastructure is put in place for things that may or may not happen. The bridges would have been built in the 70s along with the motorway, and I imagine at the time there would have been talks about upgrading the A58 and the A651 to dual carriageways. It probably doesn't cost a lot more to add an extra lane to a bridge that you're already building, so I imagine they just went ahead and built it like this anyway, just in case. Here's a question for all the railway nerds. Between junctions 27 and 28, there's a tunnel shaft. All right, cool, I know what one of those is, but why is it this shape? There are four identical tunnel shafts across the Morley Tunnel, and usually they'd be circular, right? Why are these oval? I haven't seen this before, so if you know why they're shaped like this, please let me know in the comments. And whilst you do that, here are some facts about the tunnel. The three kilometre long Morley Tunnel was constructed in 1845 and completed by 1848. At its deepest point, it's 400 feet below the surface. And they made a bit of an error during construction because they built it across an old coal mine. This created nothing but problems over the years, to the point where the tunnel had to be completely rebuilt in the 1920s. 100 years later and it's still standing strong and today is used by Northern Rail and the Trans Pennine Express. Or is it? Do Northern Rail even run trains anymore? I'm not sure. Between junctions 30 and 31 is a set of ghost slip roads that was put in place for a service station that was never built. In fact, it seems very unlikely that the services would ever have been built on the site at Methley because it was considered as a backup or reserve site. If Hartshead Moor and Hensel services reached their full capacity, only then would they build the services here at Methley. But hold on, what's this Hensel services? Yeah, they didn't build that one either, so there was absolutely no chance they were going to bother building a services here at Methley. Looking at the slip road arrangement, had it been built, it would have been quite a small site, perhaps even a rest stop rather than a full services. Junction 32A is where the M62 merges with the A1 brackets M. It's a fairly recent addition in the context of motorways having been constructed in 2005. The A1 used to run through Ferry Bridge following the route of today's A162. However, this all changed when the A1 was extended further north and upgraded to motorway status. They slotted in the new A1M around the M62 and built Junction 32A to allow for traffic movements between the two motorways. Just before you get to Junction 35, the M62 passes the 301 hectare Gale Common Ash Disposal Site. At first, I thought it was an old coal mine. We are up north after all. But no, once the nearby Ferry Bridge and Egborough Power Plant had burned through their coal, the waste ash products were brought here to be recycled and then used in construction projects. Both power stations have now closed and over the next few years we can expect to see the last of the ash 
ash extracted and the land restored to nature. Remember earlier when I mentioned Hensall Services that wasn't built? The site for this proposed services can be found between junctions 34 and 35 where we also find a set of ghost slip roads that were built in preparation for this services. The site was offered out to various companies to build a service station but with the predicted traffic levels to be quite low nobody really wanted to bother or go to all of that expense. There was that but the council also stipulated that if you were to build a service station you could only build one story buildings. You couldn't build anything that crossed over the motorway. You had to allocate a certain amount of land for landscaping. You had to plant a certain amount of trees and the layout of the service station had to be dictated by the neighbouring properties. Clearly everybody thought sod that and Hensel was more hassle than it was worth. The tangled wreckage of another tragedy on our railways. The vehicle that left the motorway and sparked a disaster. Yeah, that's not ideal, is it? In 2001, the Selby or Great Heck rail crash occurred a short distance from where Hensel services would have been built. 10 people lost their lives and 82 seriously injured as a result of a stranded vehicle on the railway. The vehicle, in this case a Land Rover, crashed through fences and ended up on the railway line with little to no time to do anything about it before an oncoming passenger train hit the vehicle at high speed. The passenger train was derailed and as if that wasn't bad enough, an oncoming freight train then hit the passenger train at speed. The driver of the Land Rover was found guilty on 10 counts of causing death by dangerous driving. There was an awful lot of back and forth in the courts, but ultimately it was decided that the driver of the vehicle was the cause of the accident. It's the largest train crash that we've had in the 21st century and we can only hope it stays that way. Long Lane sits between junctions 34 and 35 and it's interesting because not only is it a secret junction, it's also a leftover from the motorway's construction. When building the M62, Long Lane was realigned and a bridge built but for some reason they retained the original road to be used as a motorway access point. Now I'm not suggesting anything but it would appear that there aren't any signs to suggest that this secret junction is for use by authorised vehicles only. The gates are wide open and it would appear that the Google Street View driver didn't have a problem using this secret junction. Between junctions 36 and 37 is where the motorway crosses over the River Ouse on the rather impressive Ouse Bridge. The bridge was constructed between 1973 and 1976. It's about a mile long and stands at about 98 feet high. It was built as one of the last main sections of the M62, which up until this point had been a project lasting 15 years and costing around 200 million pounds. That's not adjusted for inflation, I don't think, so probably quite a lot of money. Interestingly, one of the plans originally put forward for a river crossing here wasn't a bridge at all. They were thinking about building an immersed tube tunnel, but it was quickly ruled out due to the high costs. I'm on the home straight now with the end of the M62 in sight at Junction 38. And it's interesting, when you drive on this eastern section of the M62, you're only ever around two or three meters above sea level, which makes it the lowest motorway in the country. You might remember in last week's episode we discovered that the M62 is actually the highest motorway as well, so it is both the lowest and highest motorway. What do you know about that? And here we are at Junction 38, which marks the end of our M62 journey. I'm a short distance from North Cave Village and you might be wondering, why does this big important motorway end at a seemingly random location? The answer is because they wanted it to. There was never a plan to continue the M62 from this point onwards, mainly because the A63 existed before the motorway and was already a dual carriageway. It was deemed fit for purpose, so why spend the extra money on a few more miles of motorway when the A63 will do as it is? And there we are then guys, that's all we've got time for this week. I hope you liked the video. If you did, there's a button specifically for that. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. That would be wicked sweet awesome. Enjoy the rest of your week, whatever it is you get up to. My name's John, you've been watching Auto Shenanigans, and I'll see you next time for another exciting episode of Secrets of the Motorway. Until then, take care, bye bye.